Hello, hello. Welcome to my bathroom. Welcome back, or welcome if you've never been here. Today we are going to be tinting eyebrows. And I'm just using this inexpensive, it's very cheap uh, kit that I found on Amazon. I'll link it um, in the description. I went with the medium brown. I've used this color before. I have fairly dark hair and I would strongly recommend that you go with something a little lighter than your natural hair color. So don't try to go as dark as your hair because it you can always make your eyebrows darker, but if you go too dark, then they can look really weird. Um, so I'm gonna get my hair put up, get this stuff mixed up and show you how it works. Okay, as a woman of a certain age, I have a lot of gray. I'm gonna see if this will focus. So there's quite a bit of gray up in there. And as you can see, it's not nearly as dark as my hair. So we're gonna to try to use this kit. And yes, I need my reading glasses. I've got them stashed all over the house. Do you have yours stashed all over the house? There's some in my car, there's some in my purse, there's some in my kitchen. Anyway, they're just these cheap readers, but I wanted to triple check it. Please read the instructions, read the instructions thoroughly. And hopefully we'll get this all taken care of. I'll show you about the mixing here. Okay, so the kit comes with very little actually. So there's the little mixing cup here that you're supposed to reuse. And then there is a little stir stick, which is essentially one of those little orange sticks, kind of cuticle sticks, um, a glorified toothpick. And then there's these little capsules. So you empty one capsule into the little container, and then you add the same amount as is in the capsule of the developer into the little bowl. They said, or it's about a quarter teaspoon. And then you mix it all up with a little stick and then apply. So that's what I'm gonna to attempt to do. Um, I can't do this without looking in the mirror and possibly without looking over the top of my glasses. So uh, bear with me. Okay, how much powder do we have? We have uh, about, I don't know, half. And then we're gonna put about the same amount of developer. Does that look like they're about even? On our face. Here we go. Can we just have a moment to um, shout out all of the beauty folks with YouTube channels that I'm just putting the Vaseline. So I'm just putting it around. Okay, I just do a little layer of that. How's that looking? I try to move fairly quickly because the entire thing isn't, I don't want it to be on there for more than one to two minutes. Okay, let's see if this side goes on a little better. And see how I made a big old gunk and put it on my skin? That's why I put Vaseline. <laughs> I should have started a timer. Wow. Well, little groucho marks. Okay, let's go down the rabbit hole. So you know that the Egyptians were known for their charcoal eyeliner, right? Cleopatra. But they also used to dye their hair using henna and other natural plant extracts. Later, the Romans came along and they actually required their prostitutes to have yellow or blonde hair in order to distinguish them from the uh, respectable ladies. So some of those women would wear um, wigs made out of horses hair, but others chose to dye their hair in order to comply with the, with the rules. Hair dye wasn't very common until the Dark Ages when redheads came into play. In Scotland there was a genetic mutation that ended up with some people having red hair. And of course, this was the era of burn them at the stake. So redheaded women would sometimes be considered witches. So understandably, they would want to cover their hair either with cloth or they would dye it to try to obscure the red color because they didn't want to be accused of being a witch. Uh, red hair didn't become common or acceptable until Queen Elizabeth I in the uh, 16th century came along. She was a redhead. And uh, she became, you know, then became more acceptable to have red hair. Up until the 1800s, all hair dye was natural. You know, it was henna, came from plant sources. But a chemist was looking for a cure 
to malaria and stumbled upon it and ended up coming up with a synthetic dye. It wasn't until the early 1900s though that L'Oreal, the hair coloring company we all know now, um, was founded based, and that was the very first time that we had synthetic commercially available hair dye. At that time, they used to um, exclusively use a frosting technique. So they would put a rubber cap on the person's hair. They, they would pull the little pieces of hair through the rubber cap and bleach just those pieces of hair. A similar process is still used today, but that was the way that they did it at the time. In the 1930s, Jean Harlow uh, popularized the platinum blonde by bleaching all of her hair. Um, that was really hard on your hair and it was really hard to maintain. Once Clairol was made popular with the at-home box kits and a wide range of colorings became more popular, it became way more popular and more common to dye your hair. So by the 1960s, it was so common, in fact, that they ended up removing the hair coloring designation from passports um, and most uh, you know, IDs because it was irrelevant. It was pointless to even list hair color because hair color would change so frequently and was so easy to change. Women were still being very discreet about it though. So they would get the box or go to the salon and do it kind of behind closed doors. They weren't, they didn't want anybody to know that they were coloring their hair. In the last 50 years or so, it's become so much more common to color your hair and for younger women to color their hair also. Uh, the stigma around it has gone away uh, exclusively because now people dye their hair pink and purple, which is very obvious you've colored your hair and it's no big deal. There's, there's no stigma anymore. I thought this brief history of how we came to be dyeing our hair was uh, interesting and I hope you did too. Okay, back to uh, tinting my eyebrows. That's been at least two minutes and that's probably, I don't want to risk this being too dark, so I'm going to wipe it off. Ah, got it everywhere. My oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay, I made a big mess. I'm going to wash with soap in the sink to really get this off so it stops because I don't want to risk this being a complete disaster. Here's how we ended up. This was with two minutes. So see, you can... There's not very much gray in this one left. Anyway, this is how you do it. Those are the results. I usually, I just got my hair colored today. Um, <laughs> that's why it's not fixed. And usually when I get my hair colored, I do my eyebrows at the same time. So that's about every, actually about every eight weeks or so. So it lasts fairly long. It's really inexpensive. As you can see, it's kind of a pain, the, the little powder and the little everything, which is what you want. Okay, thanks for joining me in my bathroom in this little impromptu, <laughs> not very well scripted situation. I hope uh, you join me again soon and Thanks. Bye.